you see what I have here? This is the Yiddish uh, Sefer from Britot. The uh, Haderic Hamishihistim. And this book is called Hebrews. We have it in Yiddish. And uh, the hearers of Hebrews, uh, which is really a sermon, are in danger of drifting away, chapter 2, verse 1. And uh, they have a wrong view. They don't understand the Moshiach as the Kohen Le'olam al Melchizedek, Psalm 110, verse 4. And they've taken their eyes off of the Kohen Moshiach. And uh, they're, because of their fear of persecution, etc., they're drifting away. And this, this uh, Kahuna is greater than Aaron's. But they've grown sluggish. And they're backslidden and they're wavering in faith. And they become dull of hearing. And uh, they're carnal and uh, this worldly uh, uh, lost. And they're drifting back, they're backsliders. And uh, they need to cry out to God in prayer and uh, come back to the, the true Derek Hamishahistim. And they're flirting with going back into Caiaphas's uh, Second Temple Judaism under the authority of the current uh, Kohen Gadol in Jerusalem, Ananias, who was in power from 48 to 58. And uh, they need to be reminded that if they keep backsliding in this direction, they may, re they may reach a point of no return, chapter 6, verse 6. And they really don't understand who Mashiach is. And uh, the book is supposed to show them how to hang on, even in persecution. But you have to remember, these people were Torah observant. Ask you about something you may not have thought about. Was Paul Torah observant? Now, if you go to our website, afii.org forward slash Rav Shaul Torah observant dot htm, you can read a whole thing about this. But what I want to tell you right now is that when you read the book of Acts, you find that Luke, his faithful assistant, is showing that Rav Shaul is, is Torah observant and his, his religion is um, protected as uh, religio licita. You know, Julius Caesar gave a protection to the Jewish faith. And Paul says, look, our faith is the true Jewish faith. Salvation is of the Jews. Messianic Judaism, salvation is of the Jews. Jews. Uh, this is this is the idea here. This is the legal brief that he uses when he goes into the Roman courtrooms. And uh, every single time, when you look at Acts 16, 3, Acts 18, 18, Acts 20, uh, verse 16, Acts 21, verses 20 to 26, Paul never tells Messianic Jews they can't have a bris milah for their children. He never tells them that they can't raise their children as Jews. He never uh, uh, is, he's always in shul, except when he's in prison, uh, on Shabbos. We find that uh, he wants to get back to Jerusalem for, for the, uh, for the, you know, for Shavuos and, and Pesach and all of this. Uh, so we, we see that Rav Shaul is, is, uh, is very much a Jew. Uh, an Orthodox Jew, as are all the believers uh, that, that you read about. They're, they're, they're reaching out to these non-Jews to give them the truth, but they themselves are not becoming 
uh, non-Jews in order to to to, uh, to to say you know that that we're repudiating all this. If you look at Romans chapter nine, he tells you the the, the glory of the Jewish faith. He, he he considers himself a Jew to his dying breath, and Satan is the father of lies. Friend, a lie had spread that Rav Shaul forbid Jewish. Uh, I should say, Messianic uh, Jewish uh, uh, people, uh, that he had uh, not allowed them to give their children the bris milah. That is a lie. That's not true. Look at Acts chapter 21, verse 21. No, Rob Shaul insisted that they repudiate righteousness by Maaseh HaTorah and that they make sure that they get the, the messer, the, the moil knife of the heat hot shoot of the Mashiach. The Mashiach in you, the hope of glory, the Ruach HaKodesh, cutting away that evil foreskin of the wicked heart and giving you heat hot shoot regeneration. And, and, and on what basis? On the basis of doing works? No. On the basis of faith. And this is what he's trying to protect. He is not trying to keep Jewish people from being Jewish. That is a terrible lie. And, uh, uh, and you see, the, the thing you have to remember is, if somehow a Jewish person doesn't need to have heat, hot, shoot, regeneration, and he doesn't need uh, the righteousness that comes from Moshiach Zikainu, the righteousness of Isaiah chapter 53, verse 11, where it says, my righteous servant will justify many. If, if, if somehow that it's, it's possible to get a righteousness some other way, then Mashiach died for nothing. Galatians chapter 2, verse 21. Can you say amen? Amen. Today we are talking about something very important, and that is what Yahushua or Joshua said. He said, How long will you put off going in to take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, has given you? How long are you going to be slack, slack? How long are you going to put it off? How long are you going to take to get down to business? With me, it's taken 40 years. I think that's a little too long. But uh, honestly, I couldn't do it any faster. I could only do what God uh, called me to do. What did he call me to do? He called me to take this, the, the Hebrew Tanakh, and uh, develop it as a Yiddish Bible with the truth of the scripture and the Basurus uh, Hakeola message, so that it would it would be accurate, and it would be in Hasidic Yiddish, and it would be uh, uh, available. And now I've got a I've got a tonight I'm uploading Yehoshua, uh, and then I've got a, a total of 39 books to upload, and then it's finished, then it's available di digitally. But now I have to use Google Maps and Google Street View, and I have to go and physically distribute the printed copy as God provides it. So I have a lot of work to do. But one of the things that I, that I know I have to do is to make sure that, that, that this book is centered on the Messiris Hagela message. And that message is that uh, whenever there is a new kahuna or priesthood, then there has to be a new Brit covenant, Brit Adashah, a new Torah, the Torah that is in the heart. I will write my Torah in your innermost being, and you won't have to say, know the Lord. Everyone will know him because he will dwell in you. Now, uh, we don't want to go back to some anachronistic thing. You know, somebody might say, you know, I love horses, and I love to go to Central Park and see the horse-drawn carriages. Well, would you want to get rid of the subways and go back to the horse-drawn streetcar? Would you like to do that? Of course not, because electricity has come. And, um, friend, the Mashiach has risen from the dead. The old kahuna was imperfect in the sense that uh, every son of Aaron would die and have to be replaced. But this Cohen, Loyalam Avdivriti Melchizedek, stood up alive, and his 
Kahuna is eternal. And his uh, Breed Habishah is eternal. When I wrote the book, Everything You Need to Grow Messianic Synagogue, I wasn't writing the book in order to elbow all of this out of the way and go back to some anachronism. Oh no. If you look at the book, you will see that the Breed Habishah is celebrated there in a very Jewish way. Uh, the, the Tish of Moshiach. And you see, there were things that the, the old uh, could not handle that were fixed with the new. You might think a horse-drawn streetcar would be great, but believe me, there were things with that old uh, means of transportation that were imperfect. But, but the new has come. Why should we go back? Uh, I, I don't want to be like a, an Amish person in Pennsylvania and, uh, and, and try to pretend that none of this technology has actually occurred and not make use of it. Friend, what does it say in Hebrews? Look at chapter 7. If perfection could have been attained through the Levitical kahuna, and indeed the Torah given to the people established that kahuna, why was there still need for another Kohen to come? One in the order of Melchizedek, not in the order of Aaron. For when the kahuna is changed, the Torah must be changed also, and, and not in the sense that we set aside the, uh, the Torah. I'm talking about the uh, Aseris Hydebros. We, we don't set that aside. And, and the early believers they were all in Shabbos. On Shabbos, they were in shul Amen. and their, their, their lifestyle and their means of worship were very Jewish and they did not set that aside. And when Rav Shaul finishes his uh, outreaches to the Goyim, uh, he goes back to Jerusalem and worships with this community. He even goes into the uh, Beis HaMikdash with them. And uh, he, he says, to them is the... Mahamad Habanim, the, the, the adoption of sons, the standing of sons, the uh, Torah, the Shekhinah, the, the Baratot, the, uh, you know, am I, am I setting aside my, my faith as a Jew? Not at all. But when the, when the perfection comes, friend, then the old uh, is becoming obsolete. You, you can't go find somebody who is a Kohen and take them to Jerusalem, to the Beis Hamikdash, to the Mizbeach, and offer uh, a lamb or an animal or a, a goat. Uh, it's impossible. Uh, the, the Lord has established uh, a new kahuna now. And uh, some of these uh, Messianic Jews, they don't seem to understand this. And they're, they're trying to operate as if, well, we don't really go by it. Rob Shaul's teaching, and well, we don't really look at that. We don't use that. We, no, friend, you cannot do that. You, that is false teaching. And uh, no one can take any of the books that I have written and do, do that because I, I, was, I was understanding that very problem at the time that I wrote uh, that book in 1975. But what I'm doing now, friend, is to take the Yiddish, hallelujah, the Yiddish, the Hasidic Yiddish, built on the Imunah, the, the Imus of the uh, Kippe HaKodesh, and centered on the Brit HaVashah message, and deliver that, that, that good news, that, that Hasidic Yiddish Bible. And you've got to pray for me, because we wanted to come to you, but Satan hindered us. There are many uh, obstacles. There are many uh, trials. Uh, uh, one, one particular uh, individual who was trying to help me so much, bam, two days ago, he got hit with a heart attack. I want you to pray for Chaplain Buzz. He needs your prayers. Uh, but you know what? I believe that God will bless those who bless the Jews. And this man is going to come through this whole ordeal uh, with, with a, a wonderful recovery and a healing because God is going to use surgeons. He's going to use medicine. He's going to use miracles. He's going to use prayer. He's going to bring this man through. And he's going to, he's going to bless anyone who will bless the Jewish people. 
And they, and listen, friend, hallelujah. Moshiach has risen from the dead. His kahuna is in heaven. He, he, he has a, a kapora that is eternal. That, that, that animals, goats and uh, bulls, uh, that none of these things uh, in themselves could be enough. They were only a foreshadow. And friend, we don't want to go back to the foreshadow and, and, and lose sight of, of the substance, which is that you, friend, are not Jewish enough to get into heaven unless your kapora is in Yeshua HaMashiach. You could say on your deathbed, may my death make kapora for my, my uh, neshama. But it won't, it won't make kapora, friend. Your death is mandated by the fact that you are a sinner. You, you need a perfect lamb without sin, who, who, who learned perfection by what he suffered, who, who uh, in, in the Garden of Gethsemane made the choice that he would, you know, what did Yahushua say? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And, and he said, if possible, take this from me. But if not, uh, then uh, thy will be done, not mine. Thy will be done in heaven. Are you willing to say that, friend? Are you willing to agree with the Bible, what the Bible says? The last few verses of chapter 8 of Hebrews. Are you, are you willing to agree with that? Are you willing to see how God was moving this direction all along? And once he arrives at this and gives us the perfection, why would you want to go back? I'm not going to go back to a horse-drawn streetcar. I'm going to use the uh, electric subway. I'm, I'm going to use the technology that has been given by, so that by all means we may save some, so that we can get this, uh, this uh, Yiddish Bible everywhere. Right now, if you Google Yiddish New Testament, you will see all the Yiddish books that we have. If you go to our uh, website, afii.org, A like Apple, F like Frank, I like Indiana, I like Indiana.org, you will see there all of our Yiddish work that's going up every, every day, every other day, more and more of it's going up. God wants to reach his ancient people. He wants to reach the Jewish people. He wants to reach the ultra-Orthodox Jews. He wants to show them that everything they have is pointing toward him. And they need to believe in him and receive him. To as many as received him, to them he gave the, 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 the right, uh, the, the, the uh, tokef, to become the sons of the, uh, the B'nai Ha'elokim. Can you say amen? Amen.